The dingo is the dog. A lot of people don't like me saying that, but it is true. If the dingo wasn't a dog, then what would it be? Is it a wolf? Is it a different species of canine? Or maybe is it its own new type of canine? Um, so what what is the difference between a wolf and a dog? Well, wolves are wild and dogs are like pets, is what I think most people would say. However, there's a bit more to it than that. But that's that is sort of the right idea it's just genetically wolves are wild and genetically dogs are pets um so is the dingo a wolf then because the dingo is wild well no we said it's wolves are genetically wild and what we mean by that is um well when we think about genetically wild animals we're talking about things like gorillas and lions and you know like elephants and bears and stuff like that right they're genetically wild they live out in the wild they're not really domesticated you know you don't really see them in like farms normally they're trapped in enclosures and some people will have them as pets but um you know you don't really put a lot of trust in those animals like if you go to visit someone who's got a pet gorilla you don't trust that it's not going to eventually kill its own owner yeah so that's what we mean by sort of genetically wild they don't have a sort of natural sort of ability to work well with humans you can do a lot of training but then even with a lot of training there's still no sort of trust that you would get with a dog for instance dogs we have feral dogs all over australia and you can take those feral dogs and you can train them to a point in which they are very capable of being a normal dog you would never know that it had previously been feral this is done all the time and so there is a sort of genetic thing within dogs to work well with humans and that exact same genetic aspect to work well with humans is present in dingoes um dingoes aren't as wild as you think uh prior to the australian settlers coming in and sort of fucking everything up for aboriginal people dingoes were actually part of aboriginal uh, tribes not in the same way that we have our dogs but they were a part of tribes and they did work with humans um in that sort of way and it's believed that a long time ago, uh, they were actually just regular, ordinary pets. And they were introduced into Australia as those uh, pets. And they've sort of started getting a sort of bit more wild as time has gone on. Um, so dingoes have been in Australia for apparently 8,000 years. So the current theory is that when they arrived in Australia originally, they were originally people's pets. And then they sort of got, sort of became feral dogs. But no, genetically, they are um, still domesticated. You can take dingoes out of the wild and train them up to be normal dogs. And you can find that example all over YouTube. You can find people with pet dingoes that behave just like regular dogs. Meanwhile, you look at wolf pets on YouTube. You cannot find pure wolf pets on YouTube. All you can do is find wolf dogs, which aren't the same thing. Because, you know, they're half dog or, you know, like 20% dog or 80% dog, whatever. You cannot find people with 100% wolves that are at the same standard as a dingo is. And the dingo is at basically the exact same standard as a dog. Um, so genetically, dingoes are sort of domesticated or pet-like, which is in comparison to wolves, which are genetically wild and don't nat have a sort of natural ability to work well with humans. All right, so... It's definitely not a wolf, but that doesn't mean it's a dog. It could be its own species of canine. What about the idea of a rewilded dog? Well, I mean, if you look at the face structure... Again, we're talking about genetics here. And genetics aren't just sort of one-dimensional. When you change something, it modifies something else. They've been doing an experiment with wolves for some time, trying to evolve wolves um, themselves into dogs. And they find that... As they breed for more uh, favorable traits towards humans, that you get some differences in the sort of facial structure. You know, like the nose gets pushed back a bit, or the eyes soften. I, I don't really know, but here's a picture of a dingo. Compare that to pictures of dogs, and compare that to pictures of wolves or even other canines, and you can see that the dingo quite clearly fits in under the role of dogs. You don't need to make an entirely new category. And, but let's, okay, let's say you do make an entirely new category, right? Which is retarded. What else are you putting in there? Are you just putting dingoes? Well, why would you not put their close relative, the New Guinean uh, wild dog? 
or the really close relative of that, the New Guinean singing dog, which look virtually identical. They're just slightly genetically different because they're found in sort of different regions. And it's the exact same case for those things. Those are domesticated dogs that are just live out in the wild naturally. They're not naturally wild, but they do live out in the wild and survive out in the wild. But you can easily just take them in and raise them as pets, which is in contrast to wolves. And this whole idea that, oh, you know, maybe they've become rewild since we got rid of them as being in part of, or since they arrived 8,000 years ago in Australia, or since uh, the Aboriginal people will no longer have them in their tribes or whatever. The dingo has been genetically unmodified for 3,500 years, and it is not showing any signs of changing. You've got to understand that animals nowadays, it is a positive trait to work well with humans. Why would dingoes start evolving to not work well with humans? Like, it doesn't make any sense from a sort of evolutionary perspective. The amount of humans on this earth has only grown, and being able to work well with humans is sort of, you know, that's evolutionary fitness, really. So, they're not wolves. They're not really a new species of canine, because its entire thing fits under the role of dog. Um, yeah. Yeah.